So Bismillah Rahman Rahim. We go for normalization. It's uh, the continued lecture. So in normalization, we said a quick recap of what we did. Uh, we said we have a first NF, right? So one NF. Then we got the two NF. Then we got three NF, right? Then we got the BCNF, and we have the four NF as well as five NF. And today we have also the six NF, right? This is actually different sets. This guy deals with the uh, definition of the table. Okay, uh, this has nothing to do with the functional dependencies, and these guys are dependent on the functional dependencies right that's what we said and this guy first enough is uh, just uh, uh, telling us that our data should be in a tabular form and it 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 uh, i'm going to say one enough we have a lot of things that one is that we should have a primary key right no duplicate attribute should be there so none, uh, attribute should not be repeating sometimes we have an attribute like a uh, name and something else but his course is different one field is different that is not a duplicate right and the uh, second thing is that it should have a domain your attribute should take a some same domain okay the third the biggest thing is that what atomic attributes should be atomic that's the main main uh, thing in the because uh, if the attributes are not atomic they will be not a proper table it will be in fact table inside table okay for example we said uh, like we have the uh, for example we have the department uh, course okay and we've got department name and we got location okay for example we have in a course this is my table for example, in the course, we got DBMS, and it's the computer science department who deals with it. Maybe we have the locations three, four places. It is also in Sora, okay? We have one branch in, say, for example, Howell, and one branch in Lal Chok. Now, it's having three things inside, right? So it's itself a table inside a table because this location is now non-atomic. This is not atomic, right? So this can give us a problem because this is not a proper tabular structure. So one enough says that we should not have a, a non-atomic attribute. We can fix this either by because this this location uh, makes this table into uh, not into one one enough. So either you can remove this, just disjunct this from this table, okay, and make a new table out of it, which is which is having this uh, location and also some uh, key from this table, okay. Or we can do repeating. We can say like we can make it a table form like this. We say DBMS Sora. We say again DBMS Computer Science Havel. Make another tuple, okay, and then we'll tuple number third Lal Chok again DBMS. Now it will have the redundancies, right? DBMS, computer science, and Lalchuk. Now this is another way that we fix it the problems because we are uh, we are uh, repeating things. But this uh, this the by this uh, we are introducing new problems, right? By having redundancy here, we are introducing new problems. That is the redundancy problems. Okay. So we can fix it either by uh, breaking the table into the two or by, you know, um, having the redundancies but having a single table. Okay? Either way you can uh, remove the one enough uh, problem and make your table in one enough so that your table is in one enough. Does it make sense? But this redundancy can create a problem. Okay? Uh, maybe, for example, I was not having the course and department name, 
also with it was the teacher who is teaching that okay so if uh, if we have a little bigger table we have we said we have a course here right say for the course then we said the department which it belongs to and maybe we have the who is teaching it and we have the location Right? Just only try to understand because examples you have already seen. Wa'alaikum salam. You getting me what I'm saying? So now course, we say DBM, uh, DBMS, department is computer science and teacher is for example Junaid who is teaching this. And location is Sora. DBMS again, DBMS, computer science, Junaid. Now he, the location is say for example, how will we said. And again DBMS, computer science, if you have three branches, right? And that is the Lal Chok. Now what if this table isn't one enough, one enough, no problem whatsoever, because we have non-atomic attributes, okay? And uh, we may have a primary key here, which is the, I guess, uh, we have the course name, okay? Uh, because department, we know, uh, if we say DBMS, it's, it belongs to computer science. So, a department can be derived from this course. And location can be derived from the department. So, it's a transitive dependence. And teacher, so we need, we need two here, course and teacher, right? Okay. Now, question is uh, what, what I'm uh, ta talking about is if tomorrow we could have other other courses also here, right? Other departments and other teachers here that doesn't have a uh, limit. But the problem is that if we tomorrow have to change this Junaid. Now, for example, I am uh, I am I was teaching DBMS. Now, some other guy is teaching DBMS, not me. Say, for example. Sahil is teaching now the DBMS. Now the, I have to change this Junaid to the Sahil. But this is not at a one place, at many places. And in the down the table it could be some other places also. Which is giving the information DBMS is teaching taught by the Junaid. So it is easily could it could be easily forgot to update at many places. So it can bring about the inconsistencies. So your database is, will be inconsistent. Right? So what you do in that case is you will break this table because this table has a problem of functional dependency. This is a problem of functional dependencies, right? So, a functional dependency, the two NF says that if you are functional dependent, it should be full. You should have full functional dependency, not a partial. Okay? If we see the example of our what we have given example, what we have already seen yesterday in a note, that in a 2NF, this, this table is in a, uh, okay, what's the table? This, this table, here we go the table, right? This is my table, enrollment number, store name, address, course number, course name and instructor. Now, uh, what is the primary key of this table? It should be course number and enrollment number. These two guys are the are the key, the composite keys here. Enrollment number and course number. Because enrollment number will tell you what is the student name and also tell you what is the address. And course will tell you what is the course name and what is the, in a, who is an instructor. Because you, you by saying the student enrollment number. You can tell uh, tell us what is the uh, uh, name of the uh, that student and what where he lives, but if he can by saying enrollment number we can't say uh, who is an instructor, who is teaching the problem solution. Can we say that? So we are seeing in this table that basically here were two two informations, right? If I put a barrier in between, this is my barrier, right? On this side it is a student information. And on this side, I'm having what information? Course. course information. So it's a two types of information. And I'm seeing that I'm having a composite key here. Okay. 
is this table in your mind or not so I'm having a composite key like this I have an enrollment number and I have the course number is a key and I am seeing that my other non key attributes like student name and address it can be derived from your enrollment number and remember can tell us what is the student name and what is the address of that student but can enrollment number say what is the course name no for that we need a course number the course number can determine what is the course name who is in a structure and every in the structure has a office this office is derived by the instructor and instructor tell us what's the office so indirectly course number tells us what is the office because course number will give you who is the instructor of that course DVM is taught by Junaid and Junaid has some office so course number indirectly gives you office that's called transitive dependence that's not an issue in the 2NF 2NF says that we should not have a partial dependence this is a partial dependence because uh, some of the some of the attributes are dependent on part of a key and some other attributes are dependent on other part of a key right because uh, w what we say is if we have the key here enrollment number and course number everybody should be dependent on these two guys but we are seeing that they're partial dependent so this partial dependence basically gives us the redundancy okay this partial dependence gives us all the problems uh, if you could see here in a table itself here we go look at this table and I'm seeing the Rahul Rahul and Rahul it's coming three times right because he's enrolled to three courses now his address is coming three times maybe he changed the address maybe tomorrow he want to change the address so if he changes his address right I have to change it how many times three times here I have to change this is the from main road he goes to some he from Ranchi he goes to say for example Srinagar and I have to change here Ranchi also here Ranchi also and again that same problem we can forget and our data becomes inconsistent it should be in one place so what we do is how we this is the redundancy and on this side also you could, you could see the Preeti Anand okay somewhere you see the Preeti Anand is teaching the SSAD now maybe Preeti Anand now it is me who is gonna teach this right I have to change many times again the problem so how to fix it is we break it here we break this table here right you getting me we make it two tables fine now when we make it a two tables we already discussed these things when we make a two tables okay so now we have like this we'll have a tables like this we have here this is a separate table this is a separate table understand you can understand like that that we have now the separate tables here this is separate table this side and this is separate table this side fine now a little bit thicker okay now this when, when the separate table with the enrollment number has a primary key name and address right three things we have enrollment number name and address now which is the primary key here the student name is dependent on enrollment number and address dependent on so non key attributes are these two now because this is a different table this is nothing to do with this getting me so student name and address they are fully dependent on enrollment number so there is no partial dependence a full dependence now what happens I don't have to write it three times the Rahul 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 I will write it only one time here like this I will not write it two times I will write it only one times here because there is no fun to write three times right because then it, this will not be a one enough because one enough says that there should be not duplicate apples this will not be even in a one enough then so I will not uh, write it three times I will write it one time so if you change the address I have to change it only once no problem because it's only one time here right if he changes uh, his address here from Ranchi to Srinagar I have to change it only once so there is no chance of error you getting me okay similarly this will be another table which has the, which has these things this is this is the table different table right this will be another we break this table into this table 
which has the attributes like uh, which is the primary key is course number right and course name and inner structure they are automatic they are dependent on what the course number right very simple now what happens is uh, this again I don't have to write this twice right I write it only once so if I have to change the priority on from jury no problem you can do it because it's only once does it make sense so it is doing what it is it's it's, it's having the it's it's uh, fixing the problems of redundancy because redundancy was the mother which ignites the problems of updation anomalies deletion anomalies and insertion anomalies getting it but what we have lost here the information that Rahul was enrolled to the problem solution this is lost because this is table another this is another table okay you to alag alag table hai na ab ye information ki Rahul uh, enrolled tha problem solution ke saath aapka Aparna ye is SID ke saath thi ye to hum ye to ye, ye information to lost hogi is liye hum third table banate hain saath mein okay taaki ye information wapas aaye that is about we say here the enrollment number and on this side we say what course number okay, which enrollment number is with which course for example your Rahul which has an enrollment number of 05 011 2345 we know he's he's attached with the MCS 011 now this information is here that that this student is related with this student uh, this course enrolled for this course right so to retain that we have to make a third table and also we can join the three then three tables we can join on the base of this enrollment number and course number because this guy has enrollment number which is common here and the uh, course number which is common here so I can join tomorrow and the natural join I can do on the base of course number or enrollment number for these tables and get my information back that is being already discussed you getting me so we got our information we can get our information back if we have three tables here so in my in my 2nf in 2nf we started breaking this table into three right so where is my 2nf now here we go so we say we say that uh, is a functional dependencies this is second nf now we have our functional dependencies on the basis of FDs, we start dividing our table into this table and this table, and also third table, right? Here we go. Uh, because of the trans dependence, we say this is the course number, which can tell me course name and instructor and office. Because uh, FD says what? We should have a full functional dependency. And we are having a full functional dependency here. Course name is dependent on uh, course number, instructor is dependent on course number and also office can be indirectly said that it can be derived from course number in fact this is a problem this is it's itself a problem because this will also bring us a redundancy we'll see it in a short moment but for this but 2nf doesn't work on that it is a 3nf who starts working on the uh, transit dependencies right and the for joining them joining join conditions and lossless decomposition we need what the third table that is the third that yes that's what enrollment and course so we've got three tables here right these are three tables this enrollment course is for that information that which student is enrolled for which otherwise it will be lost you understood this or not but if we go for the, the tables like this this is in a 2nf but this is not in a 3nf this is not in 3NF. For a 3NF, a table should be in a 2NF. For 2NF, table should be first in a 1st NF. Then go over 2NF. If 3NF, it should be first in a 2NF. And then it could have a problem. If it is having a trans dependence, it can also lead to the redundancy. Ex I think example is the better way to uh, let you understand. This may have given the example, but let me give you another example of which you can visualize easily. For example, we got a student table this is student table student table right in the student table what else we have we have name maybe first we have the SID okay the name then address 
okay mm, and year which year you are reading in and uh, the hostel right this table is in 2NF perfectly, no problem whatsoever, but this is not in a 3NF. We will show it because we have an assumption, because our assumption is that hostel, okay, it is the, it is the year, basically I should have written here first the year, if it's FDs, the year, Y-E-A-R, determines hostel. That means, for example, if you are a first year student, your hostel is, say, uh, something. Okay? We have, for example, three hostels for three years. If you are in a first year, we give you hostel Habakhatun. Habakhatun hostel. If you are in a second year, we give you a Ibn Sina hostel. If you are a third year, we will give you a hostel whose name is Omar Ibn Khayyam. Okay, getting me? So what I'm saying is we have a student ID, something, name, address. If you are a first year student, like, right, you will give you some hostel. Say let, let, let's uh, give the hostel names like Wyatt's, Iqbal. Okay, if you are a, again a first year student, there's another guy who is a first year student. Again, he will give a hostel name is Iqbal. Getting me? Again, a first year student with all detail, whatever it has, and he is an Iqbal. What is Iqbal? Hostel name. But if you are a second year student, we give you Romy. Yet another uh, great point. Molana Romy. Okay? If you are a second student, Romy. If you are a first year student, Iqbal. Maybe you are a third year student. Okay? Then we may have the Galib. Okay? We do not, you know, we do not, you are not supposed to have, to sing guzzles there, but this is just the hostel name. Okay? So, if you are again a first year student, then what? Iqbal. If you are a third year student, then Galib. So if here on, the, if you see here on student number following, whatever the student number we have, okay, student number and name is for whatever address is something else. This will be only once, you will have only once this thing because if he's in a first year, he will be here only. Then there is a student number one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and so on. Now st student number can easily tell us what's the name, what's the address and which year he reads in. All these three are fully dependent on this. But this hostel number is dependent on the year. So student number can indirectly tell us what is the hostel name. Because student number will tell us what is, because student number, for example, you, any one, one of you, right? And uh, then we see that you are reading in a second year. So you, we, by saying second year, you are you are uh, living in a Romi. So let, let's say it's Sir Said. To give it Urdu points all. So for second year, you are in a Sar Said hostel, right? So this indirectly hostel number take tells us indirectly because because uh, your student ID tells you year and year tells you hostel. So you can imply from this you can imply that student ID determines hostel by the transitivity right so this is the transitive uh, dependency but don't you see the it is still having a problems because for example yes what is the problem yes tell me because tomorrow for example the first year student who are in a Iqbal hostel we have changed our changed our mind that Iqbal hostel was a little you know bigger okay was a little smaller maybe and we got a new admissions and your Sar Said hostel, who is uh, who is given to the second year students, like, right? The Sar Said hostel, which is given to the second year students, and uh, it is it's 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 it, it was big bigger hostel. And we have a situation that second year students are not that much today. Uh, we have a lot of failures and all, and 
in the second year we have lesser students and in first year we have a lot of students now which we can't accommodate in Iqbal Iqbal hostel so first is true we can't uh, you know accommodate in Iqbal hostel but we have a space in Sarsa hostel uh, which is you know unused so we have an idea that we will swap we'll put first year students in a Sarsa hostel and Iqbal uh, second year students in the Iqbal right so we have to update our tables also the first year students should reflect that they are in a Sarsa so I, I, I start you know I start writing that no no Iqbal should be here should be Sarsa Iqbal should be, be Sarsa Iqbal should be here should be Sarsa Sarsa to Iqbal Sarsa to Iqbal right and this is a lot of places again the same story what we saw in a two and a problem isn't it again the redundancy are you getting me Noreen aapko koi dekh nahi raha so jao koi baat nahi you just sleep close your eyes no problem nobody is watching you you getting what i'm saying what isn't it the same problems here redundancy problems this can lead to the inconsistency is it or not because this hostel and year this is transitively dependent on the course numbers on the student id so what is the solution here break it up we have only solution whether we hum kanchi lete hain aur kaat kaatna shuru karte hain okay so what we do here is we'll make this uh, we disjunct this hostel from this table right we say we have a student id student name what was the other thing in it address okay then there was a year which year you read in and we don't put uh, that thing hostel in it and we put rather another table here which is year and the uh, hostel now we will have only here first year he is having sursaid second year he is having iqbal third year he is having something what was that galib now if tomorrow you want to change something you want to change first year to iqbal and second year to sursaid no problem only once you change your iqbal and you put it in sursaid here because only one time you change it only one time you have you are, you are cock sure that there is no inconsistency but here in this table you are not sure you may have missed some tuples does it make sense so now these this these two tables these are in 3 and f these are in 3 and f you getting me sure now if you look at this table which was in a 2 and f these two guys are already in a 3 and f uh, sorry this and this this and this is in a 3 and f but not this one you getting me why yes what i'm saying is my this table is in 3 and f this is also 2 and f and 3 and f because there is no transitive dependence this table is also 3 and f this table is in 2 and f why because fully dependent no partial dependence full functional dependency this table full functional dependency right but what about this table this has a transitive dependence this has a transitive dependence right this table is a transitive dependence this is not in a 3 and this is in a 2 enough because there is no partial dependence there is a full functional dependence but this is not in a 3 enough why because we have the office and the structure as a transitive dependence and this can lead to an instructor and office many times tomorrow if the instructor changes the office so we have to change many many times again the same thing i think my example was better which i gave you you got it hostel example was a little better so what i'm saying is uh, that uh, mm, uh, that we have to break this table how can we fix this in a 3 and f because uh, uh, a and c are already in a 3 and f the b got to be decomposed into the two tables what will be the tables you can tell me very good what are the attributes what will be attributes in a course An instructions an instruction what is an instruction it should be an instructor huh? it should be an instruction is a misprint here an instructor what would be second instructor and office you getting 
Good. I think uh, you learned it properly now. Any, any, any doubts, any questions? Okay. Let me pause the video. You just uh, jot down that example. Okay. Now we go to the next thing. That's what called the BCN. The boy's chord normal form. So it was the now with the chord, we got the another guy named boys. Uh, the two combined, they gave us the boys chord normal form. You know, basically, if some table is a three enough, it's uh, always not always, but uh, many times it's also in a BC enough. And th when you say some table is a three enough, it's better. It is a worth a table, which will not have an errors. Later on, we will see the four enough, five enough, while project join and so on. But uh, normal forms, but uh, BC enough, this occurs, uh, this problem occurs sometimes, not all the times, right? Up to three enough, you will have, um, you know, in, I know, always, uh, not always, but uh, maximum times, I can say, that you have the problems that you need uh, transit dependencies there, so you need three enough. And if you have your table normalized to three enough, it's said it's enough. It's, it's a good uh, database to build in now. We can go for the, uh, you know, to, to develop the physical schema, right? But uh, sometimes we have a situations uh, that we go, need to have BCNF. So I don't know what the example is. Let me give you another example. Let me give one example to you. Let us give you one example. Where the BCNF you know is required, we have we need a lot of things there. Where BCNF is required, okay. For example, in a table, okay, we have a table which is uh, having a professor ID, okay. We have the department ID. We have here HOD and department actually who is actually that and person time this is the example which i would like to give you it's a better example than anyone okay now the, basically what happens is we are trying to see from this table is which professor has given which how much of time to the particular department under which actually okay how much of time a particular professor has given to the department but we have some assumptions here. We have some assumptions here that HOD and department, there's only one HOD of uh, department. So assumptions, we have assumptions. Because assumptions can make it the candidate for the uh, BCNF. Otherwise, this is already in a 3 enough. That HOD is unique to a department. So if you have to identify department, you can say department ID or even you can say HOD because HOD is unique. Only one HOD per department. Is it? If you say department ID 246, it is a computer size and we know it is the Professor Shah is the HOD of it. Right? So by saying Professor Shah, it is understood it is computer science because Professor Shah is the uh, uniquely an HOD of the computer science department. So by saying Professor Shah, we can identify that who, which department it is. Or by saying department number, we can say which department it is. Right? If it's a department number, we should understand. And professor ID means which professor. You getting me? We could have other attributes also, but I am focusing on BCNF problems. So I have reduced, uh, I have deducted all my attributes, other attributes. Now percentage time. Now, percentage time, how can you calculate percentage time? Because percentage time means which professor to the which department. And we have assumption that professor can work in many departments, right? We had one assumption that HOD is single per department. And we have an assumption that, uh, you know, your percentage time, sorry, sorry, professor can work in many departments. 
this is important that he sh he's working in many department. If he's working in a single department, we know professor, we see professor ID, we know he's a computer science professor. So his, his person time will be, you know, only, only by saying professor ID, we can get the person time. Because listen, because when I say professor ID, we know that uh, which department he is. So how much of time he has given. But uh, we, ha we have the assumption here that he works many departments. Now, if I want to calculate percentage time, I have to see which professor in which department. Because now he is working in a, for example, a professor working in the computer science department, he is also teaching, say, C language in the electronics department. Right? Getting me? So, what time he has given which department? The percentage time by saying professor ID only. Professor, some, something, some professor, professor A. Can we calculate percentage time by saying only professor ID here? No, we also need to know which department. So what is the key here? It's a composite key, beautiful. Which one? Okay. Professor ID and department ID, is it? So we can, we have a key here. Professor ID as well as department ID, right? This is my one composite key. This is a composite key. So primary key is a composite key. And this can tell us what is your percentage time. Because which professor in which department and how much of time is given. Does it make sense? Now, what I am saying is, because th this, is, this is because we have the, from this assumption we got it. But from this assumption, we are saying that HOD and is single per department. So can't we say also that that professor ID and HOD this is also the candidate key and this can also give me the percentage time because department ID is uh, saying department ID or HOD it is same because uh, department ID can uniquely identify which department and HOD also can uniquely de determine which department. So HOD can also act as a department ID. So in my pram, we, I could have another composite key in which I have professor ID and HOD, which can tell me which, what is the percentage time. You getting me? This actually gives you a problem of what's called as the BCNF. So if we have a situation here like this now, this is a candidate for the, so we had two candidate keys, right? We had two candidate, what, what is the candidate key? Isn't it? So both of these can act as the primary keys because both of them can determine the non key attribute person time. So we have a situation like this. That we have a HOD, Professor ID, and we have the Department ID. This can act as a keys, and we have a percentage time on, on one side, which to, is to be which is the only non-key attribute here. And we could have a key that is my HOD plus Professor ID, isn't it? Or we could have a key. Professor ID plus department, right? This also can determine person time, this also can determine person time. Now I have two composite keys, not one composite key. This is the condition for BCNF that if we have a two composite keys and out of it, they are overlapping composite keys. Composite keys are overlapping. Because Professor ID is common in these, uh, both of the, isn't it? Professor ID is common here, Professor ID is common in this composite key also. So these are overlapping candidate keys. We have more than one candidate keys and they are overlapping. They are what? Overlapping. Not only that, we have we have one more condition to have here. And the non-overlapping part. What is the overlapping part? What, what, tell me first what are the composite composite keys here? We have two composite keys. One composite key is very good. And Professor ID and HOD. Right? Which is the overlapping part? Which is the non-overlapping part? And this non-overlapping part, right, is dependent. 
because department tells me what is the HOD, HOD tells me what is the department. So we are having three things here. If we want to have some situation of BCN, we have three things. Number one, over, uh, first thing is multiple composite key. Second one, overlapping composite key, right? So we have overlaps there. And number third is dependence in non-overlapping non part of composite key. The three things here, multiple composite keys, overlapping composite key, and dependence non-overlapping composite key. This is the candidate. If you have these three situations, right? If you have these three situations, then this is a candidate for the what? BCNF. Now we have a problem of BCNF. Boy score normal form. We got to break it. We got to break it because this will definitely have the problems. Okay? And uh, this is your home desk because we're running out of time, a lot of time. Okay, this is your home task to fill attributes of this table and see what is the where is the error? Where sorry, where is the that you know uh, the anomaly? Okay, and uh, then you see that, right? Then you break this table so that this table will be in a BCNF. Okay, this table surely is not in a BCNF now. This table is surely not in a BCNF. This table, right? This is not in a BCNF. You have to decompose this table into the BCNF by populating it. First, populate the table and see uh, what could be the error. Where is the redundancy and all? And how I fix that? How I decompose that? This will be your home task today. And that's the end of this segment okay so ma salama